2020 marks 150 years since The Ohio State University opened our doors with the mission of bringing a practical education to Ohioans to help improve agriculture and the mechanical arts. A lot has changed over the last 150 years, and we thought it would be fun to take a look back on the progress we've made together. So let's jump back to 1870. Back then, farm labor was primarily manual, but Ohio farmers were already making great strides, improving their productivity and profitability. Horsepower that helped accomplish farm work was provided by horses and mules. Wide set rows, often spaced 42 inches apart, were determined by the limitations of manual weed control. Plants were spaced far enough apart to accommodate a mule or horse drawn cultivator. Recent inventions that were revolutionizing crop production during this time included the steel plow, the reaper binder, and the check row planter. These tools made it possible to more efficiently prepare and plant fields. The invention of the check wire was a major quality of life improvement for farmers. This wire, with knots set at intervals, eliminated the need for farmers to manually trip the planter to drop seed. Genetic crop improvement was commonly done on the farm. Open pollinated varieties were planted and ears were selected and held back for planting the next year. Yield contests at fairs across Ohio allowed farmers to benchmark their success against their neighbors. While bragging rights were a major prize, the ingenuity of Ohio farmers enabled the creation of varieties that suited local needs and increased yields. Here at the review site this year, we planted three different open pollinated varieties to showcase the plant breeding accomplishments of farmers in Ohio. Leeming Yellow Dent was developed by Jacob Leeming from Clinton County, Ohio in 1856. It was selected for its large tapered ears with dark yellow kernels. Other desirable traits of this variety were its medium stalk height and broad leaves. Leeming yielded over 100 bushel per acre and won the Grand Prix at the 1878 Paris World's Fair. Throughout the season here in London, Ohio, this variety has lived up to our expectations, maintaining great plant health and putting out wide, floppy leaves that take advantage of the sun's energy. Claridge Dent Corn was developed by Edmund Claridge just south of London in Fayette County, Ohio in the early 1800s. This variety was a foundation of many varieties, including Rotten Claridge Dent, and also, also called Spotted Claridge Dent. Rotten Claridge is a blue and yellow dent corn that was popular in Highland, Brown, Ross, Fayette, and Madison counties. It was highly regarded by cattle farmers for its feeding value and was still being grown in Ohio until the 1980s. The next variety is Blue Claridge. It was developed from Rotten Claridge in the 1920s. It's a blue dent corn that was regarded by cattle and poultry farmers and it was grown extensively in central Ohio until the 1950s. This variety is still available from many heirloom seed sellers, and due to its higher sugar content, it makes good roasting ears and a sweet corn meal. These varieties are just a sampling of the amazing diversity of the varieties developed and grown across Ohio. It's been exciting watching history grow before our eyes this season. As the 19th century neared a close, engine-powered tractors were entering the scene. The first gasoline-powered tractor was invented in 1892, and the corn picker followed in 1909. Tractor-drawn combines became popular following World War II, and the first self-propelled combine was invented in 1937. The increase in mechanization increased the amount of work that could be accomplished, improving the efficiency on Ohio farms. This mechanization also made it possible to accommodate higher crop yields and allowed for narrower rows. The pursuit of increased yields and improved grain quality led to a shift from selecting open pollinated varieties to hybrids. In the 1920s, the first commercial hybrid seed corn was produced. These original hybrids were created from four inbred parent lines, crossed to create two hybrids, which were then crossed again to produce the double cross hybrid. This method made it possible to take advantage of some of the benefits of heterosis while still producing enough seed to plant. The uniformity and increased productivity led to hybrids being rapidly adopted on farms, and by the 1950s, most corn planted was hybrid corn. The success and popularity of the double cross hybrids led to seed companies focusing on improving their inbred parent lines to increase their yields to economically produce single cross hybrid seed to sell to farmers. 
The resulting single cross hybrids displayed the same benefits even more strongly, and the rate of yield increase per year nearly doubled. Through these continuous improvements, average corn yield in Ohio has increased over 150 bushel per acre since 1870. With these new genetic improvements came changes in crop management practices. The more vigorous hybrids could tolerate higher populations. The technology boom fueled by World War II brought chemical weed control options and synthetic fertilizers to agriculture, which further enabled the changes that we would begin to see. Plant breeders selected plants that had more upright leaves that could more efficiently intercept light and crowd out weeds. Improvements in planting technology have also come a long way since the check planter with a wire. Not only have planters gotten larger, they have also been engineered to place seeds more precisely. Today's planters can singulate seeds and maintain plant spacing as evenly as a picket fence. Other advances include fertilizer placement in the furrow and next to the row. Variable rate seeding and multi-hybrid planting capabilities are helping farmers manage field level variability like never before to maximize the profitability of every acre. These technologies combined with genetic advances through genetically modified crops have allowed us to push the boundaries of crop productivity and efficiency. Today, Ohio State University continues to fulfill the land grant mission by partnering with farmers across the state to push agriculture forward. The eFields on-farm research program brings research to farms to improve the profitability as well as the environmental sustainability of Ohio agriculture. Together, we are heading into the next 150 years, learning more about how exciting technology like autonomous vehicles, unmanned aerial vehicles, and digital tools will change our future.